the other thing I've been thinking about is the other thing I've been thinking about a lot actually lately has been Tory Lanes. Now, this is a pretty you know, this topic has been run through the ground, right? It's been run, run through the ground, run through the ground so much I'm sure people are tired of it, but it's just interesting to me. We're in a situation now, of course, we're like a year out, still no conclusion. Still no idea what happened in that car um, post, you know, the viral video going around of Tory hanging around with Megan and Kylie and Paul. We have no idea what exactly happened in that car, what transpired, what led to the argument, what led to the alleged shooting. Nobody has any clue. But the odd thing has been the fallout from it has been so far that Tory's career has kind of been put on pause. You don't really see his music being talk, spoken about on platforms he's better being spoke, spoken about. I think of first thing that comes to mind is Joe Bodden podcast, right? He's obviously... You know, did a pretty good sit down with him on his pull up show. Um, they spoke very highly about his work prior. Joe's a really big R and B head. No mention of what he's done so far, and you know that makes sense because you know those guys in that podcast put a, they put their flag to the ground early and basically said you know they condemned him already without you know any proof really. But you know they're free to do what they want. But it's just the overall um, sentiment in the industry is that he's guilty. He's whatever he's been accused of is true. So his career has been put on hold, but then the other party, when it comes to Megan Stanley, has been able to kind of utilize and kind of, I won't say profit, but you say profit, profit off of the back of this and use it to her advantage, I say, which obviously most people do, because if you're a celebrity or somebody in the public eye, any kind of hardship you come across or anything in your life, whether it's good or bad, it's basically a chance for you to propel and to use it to kind of widen and broadcast your name to a bigger audience it is what it is the nature of the game if you're a, a you know a decent pr you're definitely going to use whatever happens to your client whether it's positive or negative for their ultimate bottom line right you want it to impact and kind of benefit their bottom line so it makes sense but it's just uh it's just the one-sidedness of it all that rubs me all the wrong way why is one person allowed to continue life as normal and progress and do what they need to do and the other person is kind of being put on pause or in a way they've, they're kind of being um politely ignored right which is probably the worst thing you probably would prefer to get cancelled out right as opposed to just politely ignored where people just pretend they can't hear what you're saying they pretend you didn't put out two pack you know um you didn't put two albums out back to back that are pretty high level they're gonna pretend that you don't film really good music videos they're gonna pretend you're not really you know popping and viral and quite you know a good personality on social media like they, those things are probably i'd imagine for somebody that's a um a what uh once narcissist whatever it may be called if you're a celebrity right you kind of love to be in front of the camera you love to be the talk of the town that must be it's really brutal to kind of bear with right the fact that people are quietly ignoring what you're doing and choosing not to speak on it positively or negatively it's just being nonplussed and you're kind of seeing a little bit of that happening with six nine in it everyone's sort of starving him of oxygen no one's really giving him the time or the space to you know get on platforms to say what he wants to say apart from academics really no one's really reporting on every little thing that he does even though he's trying to do as much as possible to kind of um, elicit a reaction um and then i guess you know tori like i said put out the what is it i think it's called playboy a lover boy one of the others um other album out on you know and it's pretty good like i said really good r&b if you're into that kind of stuff i really enjoyed it and um it seems like the DSPs are going out of their way to not basically put, you know, whatever they release an album, especially on a front page, you usually get like a banner or a list of songs or list of albums that are trending at the time and they'll curate the homepage in a way to let the users know that, hey, this thing is doing really well, you should listen to it. And obviously, he's not getting any sort of looks pertaining, you'd assume, with what happened with Megan and kind of Tori spoke about it a little bit, so let's hear what he has to say. All the umbrellas, all my fans out there for what y'all just did. We number one with the R&B capsule on the R&B charts of iTunes Music. We number one on the R&B charts of Apple Music. What y'all did right there, what people don't understand, my music right now, the platforms got it in a way where when you look at my, uh, when you look at the, the homepage of these platforms, you can't even find my music. You can't find it nowhere. It's as if I never even dropped nothing. So in order for people to actually have my music chart anywhere, they got to go search for it and individually look for my name and all kind of stuff like that. And it's crazy because they brought it to number one. But I just asked, like, at some point, when does this not seem to be unfair to y'all? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like y'all are treating me as somebody that y'all think I am and not treating me as the person that I actually am. And that's not fair. Y'all don't know my life. Y'all know my music. My music is on the top of charts, which means there's a demand for my music. If there's a demand for my music, it's y'all job to curate that music to the people there's a demand from. That's all I ask is treat me fairly. 
And unfortunately, we just don't have that. And again, it's less so about who you believe and just more so about why can't we live in a world where people just suspend judgment until more evidence has come or it's brought to light? Why can't we have due process, especially in this sort of issue? There are occasions when somebody with a really long rap sheet, right, with a reputation for being a bit of a piece of shit comes out and does something that we don't like or that society deems to be irrehensible, irrepensible, whatever that term is, right? <laughs> whatever that word is. Um, and people make a snap judgment and usually, let's say eight times out of ten, your snap judgment is usually right. But in some occasions when somebody doesn't really have a history of anything concerning violence against women, seems like a pretty decent dude, um, and the other person we haven't really heard much from either, it's really odd that suddenly everyone just accepted one side of the story and didn't want to accept maybe the other side. And this also comes from somebody that's also, I've kind of come to the conclusion that even if it does transpire, that Megan lied and just made up the entire thing to gain sympathy or to, you know, basically stick the boot in back to her ex-boyfriend, whatever. Let's imagine she did lie. I, just, I still don't want to live in a world where people, you know, basically bomb her out of the, the scene as well. I think there should be a level of grace um, kind of permitted to both people in both situations, a, a, a level of understanding, um, a level of, you know, civility, um, some sort of road back to redemption, regardless of how it ends. But in this moment in time, before there's any sort of judgment in the courts, before there's any sort of sorry, verdict, why are we the ones, especially in society, and especially these digital streaming platforms, forget us, the digital streaming platforms who, for the most part, you look at the other artists who are on there, legacy acts, whatever they may be, everyone's got a checkered past. No one's coming, no one's coming into the industry smelling like roses. Everyone's got their own skeletons. But again, it's music. We want the art. You know, sometimes some of the personal things can impact the art and maybe put you off of it. But again, it shouldn't be the DSP's decisions as to who we should and shouldn't listen to. It should be us, which is why I say in the beginning of most stuff I talk about when it comes to this sort of stuff. This is the main reason why I've never really been the biggest fan of cancel culture at all. I just don't like it. I think it's, I just don't think it's constructive because what it does is that it takes away the power and it takes away the decision making from the fans and puts it directly in the hands of the DSPs who then turn into their own version of gatekeepers. This is exactly what the record label did, right? When they were deciding, oh, who is hot, who isn't hot. It's like, no, 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 no. We are the ones that should be deciding that because we're the fans. If we like this person, we want to back what they do. Cool, let them back what they do. Or it should be the responsibility of, again, of these, if a journalist actually did what they're meant to be doing, they would go out there and investigate these claims thoroughly, present all the evidence to us, and then we should make a decision as consumers as to who we want to listen to. Do we believe the artists that we kind of followed or do we leave um, the journalists? That should have, that should have, it really should be, but it's not. It's this weird thing where if you're friends with people and if people like you and they know you, then maybe that will uh, impact the way that you're received. And it's just really horrible because on the other side, you look at it and you think, Look at what's happening with this whole T.I. and Tiny thing. No one actually knows if any of this stuff is true, what they're speaking about, right? We have no idea. Um, there's no way of us knowing or pertaining to it, but the evidence so far is damning, right? Women after women, like maybe, I think last, last or six more people came out with stories alleging some, you know, untoward behavior, you know, happened to them whilst they're in the company of Tia and Tanya. So far, the response has not been as condemning as it's been with Tori, alleging this situation. This only involved two people. It didn't impact anybody else. It's just between those two, like a lover's tiff, for instance. But these other situations have impacted other women. Yeah, I think I read a story of some woman saying she basically soiled herself due to the punishment or the violence that was enacted on her when she was in their company of these people. Like so actual people in normal world in the normal real real world have been impacted by this guy's actions allegedly and nothing's being done no outcry no nothing no cancellation on the dsps and whereas this guy got from what we look from what we can see so far they got into some sort of lover's tiff that ended in a really dramatic way with allegedly someone getting shot in the foot again we don't know the details of it. we don't know what's going on why are we so quick to ice somebody out and then allow the other person to do what they want to do it just seems odd I'd much rather live in a world where both people are allowed to continue doing their careers. The fans of their music should continue buying and supporting whatever they want to support. If you don't like what they did allegedly, then you're free to not just not buy into it. But this idea that these you know digital streaming platforms should be able to judge or to play basically judge and jury as to who's allowed to put music out when they have far more uh, irre 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 irrehensible, whatever you have now, far more uh, scumbaggy people on their platforms than him. 
that's basically my point of it all of this stuff i just i just don't get it man i really don't it's a really